This is a story about one of the sad realities of high school. Babies having babies. Oh, baby. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I had an appointment with Little Mary's mother. Little Mary was a 14-year-old freshman in high school, and Little Mary was pregnant. Her mother wanted to talk to me about educational arrangements for her daughter. I understood Mary's doctor anticipated that Little Mary would soon be prescribed bed rest. I was happy to visit with Little Mary's mother. Experience had taught me it is much easier for a learner to try to keep up with their classmates as opposed to trying to catch up with their classmates. The prospect of bed rest away from school, combined with a normal post-birth recuperation, meant little Mary would need special accommodations at her home to try to keep up with her schoolwork. Little Mary, for her part, was a good student who hadn't darkened the principal's door. This meant I had not contacted her parents or met them. My secretary tries to hide a smile as she leads two very curvy ladies into my office. As the two newcomers get settled into the visitor chairs, my secretary exchanges pleasantries with them as she leaves. They appeared to know each other. The two ladies were dressed in a way uncommon to a high school. Both wore pencil skirts, heels, and very low-cut blouses. Their tandem perfume was almost overpowering in my small office. One had to be the older sister. I judged her to be in her early 20s. The other, the mother, was probably early 40s. Both were stunningly attractive, to the point it made me uncomfortable. As I look over the mother's shoulder, I could see some of my teachers lurking about outside my office, wanting to get a look. I guess my secretary had been to the break room and stirred up interest. I just wanted to get this meeting over. Generally, my part was to coordinate the other people who would be interacting with the pregnant student. The counselor did most of the heavy lifting, a homebound substitute teacher for instruction, and the nurse for good measure. Once the team was in place, things would usually take care of themselves, since we'd been down this road many times before. It was my job to set things in motion. The meeting started downhill when I asked to see their IDs. Since I didn't know them, I wanted to make sure my conversation was with a person who was on the student's parent guardian list and had the right to the student's private information. I had written down the names from our system. I just wanted to be careful. May I see your IDs? The women, a little annoyed, fumble in their purses. The mother hands me her driver's license. She matches her license, but her name doesn't match anything in our records. Ma'am, I stupidly say, your name doesn't match the mother's name on the student's record. You know, the only good thing about this kind of foolish mistake, you never make it twice. Before she can respond, the younger lady says, that's because I am little Mary's mother. As I look down at her driver's license, the names match. I think to myself, never assume. You know what happens when people assume. I continue to stare at her driver's license. She saves me the trouble of doing the math. Yes, I'm Mary's mother, she says. I'm almost 29. The other lady, not to be outdone, says, I will be the great-grandmother. I'm 44. She then pokes out her ample cleavage. Not bad for a great-grandmother, huh? Yikes, I almost wet myself. Three generations separated by 14 years each. Holy cow, you can't make this stuff up.